All right, here we have another example of a situation where we're trying to find what the value of x is, okay, that will make this equation true, all right? So let's just get right into it. We've got 3x minus 2. Now, since the denominators are the same here, what we can do is then subtract the numerators. If this was an addition sign, we would have to add the two numerators, but since it's a subtraction, we're subtracting. All right, so let's subtract 2x plus 3, and we'll put that all over 5, okay? And then that's equal to 4 fifths. All right, let's see what we can do here if we can combine any like terms, all right? So the first thing that we need to do is recognize that this is a negative 2 times the quantity x plus 3. So why don't we distribute distribute the negative 2 over everything inside the parentheses so that we can make some like terms. Negative 2 times x is negative 2x, and negative 2 times positive 3 is negative 6, okay? So after we distribute this negative 2, we're going to wind up with a negative 2x minus 6. Negative 2x minus 6. All right. Now we can combine some like terms. We have a 3x and we have a negative 2x. When you combine those, 3x minus 2x is x, all right? If we have 3x's and we subtract 2x's, we've got 1x left, all right? Now here we have a negative 2 and a negative 6. Negative 2 minus 6 is negative 8, all right? So this will all reduce down to x minus 8 in our numerator, okay? And again, let's put a parentheses around it now that we want to make sure that we're keeping them uh, nice and uh, packaged together, all right? So I'm just going to bring this in a little bit here. x minus 8 is in our numerator, 5 is in the denominator, and then we have that equal to 4 fifths. All right, so this is an interesting problem right now because we have something pretty special. So let's look at this. Let's say you were given this in the first place. This could be a, a great starting point just to have a problem. And what would we have here? When we have a fraction that's set equal to another fraction, we call it a something very specific. And there's a vocabulary term that this is. When one fraction is set equal to another fraction, it's called a proportion, okay? So that's a very specific vocabulary term. It means that this fraction is set equal to this fraction. All right, so what we're doing here is trying to figure out what this x needs to be so that this fraction is indeed still equal to that fraction on the right-hand side. Okay, so what we can do is we can get rid of our denominators. We always want to get rid of our denominators because it's then much easier to solve for x. So how do we get rid of our denominator on the left-hand side? Well, if we multiply it by 5 over 1, do you see that they cancel out just to 1s? Remember, though, because of the property of equality, we need to do to one side what we did to the other. So since we multiply this side by 5, to keep this balanced, we need to do the exact same thing to the other side. Now, it's nice that in this case, it also happens to be a 5 in the denominator. It's because we're sort of making these problems uh, a little bit more manageable until we get to other problems where the denominators are not the same. But for now, let's, let's do these problems where all the denominators are the same. So now do you see that 5 and 5 also cancel out to 1s? So we can clear away all of this mess now because all we're left with is x minus 8 equals 4, okay? How do I get rid of, um, of this negative 8 so that we're isolating just x? Well, let's do its inverse operation. Since it's a, a subtracting 8, we need to add an 8. And whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other, all right? So this cancels out to 0, and you're just left with the x on this side, and then here 4 plus 8 is 12. So x equals 12. We just solve for it. 